A lot of people have talked about, you know, the Browns being off season champs, you know, year after year. And, and, and now you, you feel like you're you're building something and you, and you have an off season to, to really try and develop the chemistry. Very happy to be joined by now the longest tenured member of our Cleveland Browns from back in 2014. You know him, you love him, the Pro Bowler, Joel Batonio. And Joel, first of all, I can't help but notice your name here on this meeting, JB75, so appropriate. And uh, it's just great to be with you. Great to see you. How you doing, man? I'm really well. Um, I'm not really sure where the username came from. <laughs> that might be like my PlayStation username or something like that. Uh, I don't really know. So uh, so that, that's a, a different one, but we'll roll with it today. We're, we're doing okay. You know, I know it's, uh, you know, everybody's kind of at that stay at home mode right now, but, you know, I'm with my family and, and that's all you can really ask in times like this. Yeah, it's obviously, it's a pretty wild time. And just kind of how has it, you know, impacted you? How's the family? Where are you guys? And uh, I see you're in a, a lovely, looks like an office. You got a, a map behind you on the floor there. What, what's kind of been the, the routine for, for the Betonias? Yeah, yeah. We're back in Ohio. So we, we got to Ohio. Um, we did some traveling early in the off season before everything kind of went a little crazy, but we're back in Ohio in our home here. So that, that's been good. You know, my wife and our two dogs and our daughter are out all here and, and we're feeling healthy right now. And so that's, that's as much as you can ask, but um, you know, everybody has all this free time, but with us, when you have a one-year-old, you're, you're running around. So it's uh it's pretty normal for us. You know, we're not going out to eat or, or doing that kind of, you know, fun things as much, but we're cooking at home or hanging out and, and it's, you know, in season, you, you miss out on a lot of family time. So for us to, to kind of be able to hang out, we're trying to make the best of it. You know, we, we understand like the world is in a you know tough place, but, the Petonians are trying to stay together and just, uh, you know, grow as a family and hang out and really enjoy the time we do have together. Absolutely. I mean, you got daddy's little girl and, and right there all the time for you, 24 seven. So I'm sure <laughs> oh, yeah. that's a little bit of a change from what you're used to, but I'm sure it's all, uh, also very, very special time. Exactly. Exactly. We're, uh, we're enjoying it and she's growing every day. So it's, it's fun to, uh, to kind of see her just take those steps every day. And I think she's excited to wake up and see us every morning. So it, 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 it's been fun for what it is. Like I said, I mean, we, we want to, you know, nip this in the bud and get back to uh, reality and get back to working with the team and stuff. But we're going to try and make the best of what we can do. So you said you're cooking a lot at home. Or are we getting a little uh, – what's on uh, Chef Betonio's? What's what's kind of your been your go-to? Yeah, we, we've tried to change it up. You know, we try to get some frozen stuff. And we don't want to go too crazy. We know the grocery stores are open and – you know, they're going to stay open so people can keep going back there. But I mean, this week, I think we've done chili one night. We did spaghetti. Um, you know, I tried to smoke some chicken wings a few times, like when it gets warm enough, you know, it's a nice day today. So we're, we're working on that, but just a variety of things, you know, we, we try and work things that you can have some leftovers with and, and enjoy. And uh, Zoe doesn't try everything, you know, but she, uh, she tries a, a few of the items we've made. What's your favorite thing to eat just in general? If you had your, your brother's free reign, what's your, what's your go-to meal? If you said, all right, this, I mean, this is my meal. Right. It's hard for me to pass up like a good steak, but if, if we're going for a true meal, I'm a taco guy, like any types of tacos, you know what I mean? You can do steak, shrimp, chicken. There's just so many different varieties. You can do 10 different tacos, 10 different days in a row. And you got, That's right. you got different ties. So I, I would say I'm a taco guy. I like wings too. You know, I'm a big guy, so I enjoy all that kind of stuff, but uh, I'll go with tacos today. Listen, the taco shell is just the vessel. You can put whatever you want in there. You don't have to be limited by anything. Fill it up however you want. Oh, exactly. You can do exactly. What would be your number one taco? Ooh, um, I would say a good like carne asada taco, like just traditional. You know what I mean? Um, not too traditional. I'd like a little sauce or something, maybe some guac or avocado, but but just that with some onion, cilantro. You know, nice and marinated, flavored. You know, just get some good flavors. It's simple, it's easy, and uh, and it tastes good. I'm an Al Pastor man. We just had, we were lucky to get to go down to Mexico before this all got crazy. And one of the nights we did a walking taco tour in Sayulita, which is just outside of uh, Puerto Vallarta. And oh man, that Al Pastor when they cut it right off the spit, oh, that's my thing. A little pineapple, a little habanero. Let's go. That's awesome. <laughs> it is good stuff. So, Joel, let me ask you just kind of, you know, as it relates to your teammates in this crazy time, you've been able to talk to the guys. I mean, I'm not going to – I don't think I'm speaking out of turban. I say your room's had a, a pretty good few weeks. Your, your, our good friend J.C. Treader becomes the head of the NFLPA. We yeah. bring Jack Conklin into the mix as well. So what's kind of the, the communication between your, your guys up there, the, uh, the Mog Hollies uh, in the front lines? 
Yeah, no, we've uh, we've had good communication. You know, JC got married this off season, so a bunch of us were back in uh, in San Diego, California for that. That was awesome. You know, uh, it was a good group of us. Joe Thomas made an appearance. Baker was there as well, plus a lot of the alignment. Um, so that was fun. And then a lot of us went down to uh, Miami as well to help JC get you know nominated for that NFLPA president job. You know, I, I would say I was probably chief of staff. You know, working the uh, ah. in the rooms in the corridor you know, trying to, uh, to get him nominated, but I think he's the right man for the job. You know, I know we're going through a lot of things and there's some positives and negatives from the new CBA, but, um, I think he's a guy that's, you know, really went to school for, um, negotiations and, and, and things of that nature. So he's in a good spot, but, um, but it was fun. You know, we, we got to kind of go down there and it's fun to interact with all of their teams because you see the guys on the field, you're playing against them, but when you, when you're in a room with those guys, um, it, it, it's fun to kind of be around. And then like Zeitler was there, Corbett, um, Mitch and uh, Alex Mack were all there, so it was like a uh, reunion. <laughs> Cleveland Cleveland Browns O line uh, reunion. We were going to get a picture, but we were like, uh, let's let's not do that. We forgot about it. You know, we we're going to try and get a picture of all the linemen that had, had played for the Browns that were at this meeting. But it, it, it was a good time. And um, Jack, I, I, I've talked to him a few times now. Actually, he's uh, he's pumped. You know, I know he's probably a little bummed that we we're not getting started on time. Probably, you know, it, it seems like it's going to be delayed a couple weeks at least. And uh, but but he's excited to be here. You know, I think. Uh, me and JC both have reached out to him and, and just the type of guy he is, you, you know, from the small interactions I've had with him, he just seems like a guy that you want on your team. He's going to work hard. He's going to do his best. And uh, he's a good football player. And that's really all you can ask on the O-line. And I think working with Callahan and, uh, you know, Stefanski on the offensive staff was a real, real positive for him because he's been in, you know, that kind of outside zone system. And it's, uh, it's one of the things that I'm looking forward to, you know, obviously I, I want to get to know the guys, as quick as possible, but it's good to good to have another strong piece in that room. And then, um, you know, as far as uh, Hooper goes, you know, I've been to the Pro Bowl in the last two years, and so I've actually become pretty decent friends with him as well. And and he uh, he was um, a California kid as well, you know, from from up north, but he's yep. a California kid too. So we've had some good conversations as well, and I know he's excited to be out here. And and he had that kind of crossover from the Shanahan outside zone system. So you know, I know he's a playmaker when, when he gets the ball in his hands, but. I'm excited to see what he can do on some of those outside zones in the, in the blocking uh, scheme as well. By the way, I just have to appreciate the subtlety of the, you know, I was with them the last two years at the Pro Bowl, no big deal, but you just dropped right there. That was pretty, that was well done. That was well done, GP75, well done. <laughs> Don't show JC that. He gets mad anytime I bring up the Pro Bowl, so we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we might have to cut that one. <laughs> we might cut that. Well, here, we'll, to curry favor with JC, uh, give me your, well, you, as a chief of staff, you said you were making the pitch. Give me like the quick elevator pitch on why JC was the, uh, the right man for the job. Yeah, JC uh, sees both sides of the um, issues. You know, he he can stand in the middle of the aisle and understand the positives, the negatives. He's uh, understanding. You know, there's a lot of frustrations going on in these meetings. You know, a lot of yelling back and forth, and it got pretty intense. And he can keep his cool mind and, and make the decision for the greater good. You know, a lot of guys look at these and, and what decision is is best for me personally. And I think JC takes a perspective of what's best for the union, and um, he's going to lead from the front in that perspective. I like that. So it, it quite the opposite of the Game of Thrones finale where they got it wrong by making Bran the king of the seven kingdoms. You guys got it right with JC. Yes, Trump, the hen of the. I, I think so. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so as well. Uh, you talked about that wide zone, and you mentioned Austin Hooper. You know his rookie season with Kyle Shanahan. Your rookie season with Kyle Shanahan. Getting back to that, Are you excited? To kind of get back to that scheme under Kevin Stefanski. Yeah, I'm pumped. I mean, I wish I could know exactly what the offense was doing right now. We haven't really got into that yet, obviously, but um. But it, it's exciting. You know, I think coming to the league, that was a huge, you know, obviously besides playing next to Joe and Alex, um, just being in that scheme, it, it, it's friendly to its players. You know, it puts players in, in a positive position on offense. If, if we're not great at doing something, they're not going to try and run that. But the way you run the outside zone and then how it meshes with the play action pass and the boot game, um, it gets guys open. You know, I remember vividly my, my rookie year was having that little like drag route across the middle where the guy was, you know, 15, 20 yards. And, and I think we probably did that 15 or 20 times that year where the guy was just open and it was different people. It was, it was Gary, it was Jordan, it was Hawk, it was Taylor Gabriel. And all those guys were running open across the middle. And I'm like, Hey, if we can get stuff like that going, you know, free 15 yards with the weapons we have now on our offense, I think it's, it, it, it's a big plus. Um, yeah. You know, it's hard because a lot of people have talked about, you know, the Browns being off season champs, you know, year after year. And, and, and now you feel like you're, you're building something and, and you have an off season to, to really try and develop the chemistry, you know, and, and we'll see how it goes. You know, we're trying to work, but I think we do have a good connection on offense with guys understand 
what type of people they are and who they are. And uh, the guys we've brought in on offense, you know, in free agency, and I'm sure in the draft are all people that I think are going to be working to that goal. So it's an exciting time. It certainly is. And I know this isn't the time of year where you're allowed to talk with Kevin Stefanski and Bill Callahan about exactly what the scheme is. That will come once you guys are able to report and get into the the business of it. But what are just kind of your first impressions of them? I'll start, obviously, with the head coach, Kevin Stefanski. Yeah, he's smart. Um, I think everybody probably tell, tell, tells you that. He's intelligent. Um, I think he has an organized structure. You know, from all the years he's he's been with one organization, he's taken picked the brains of three different head coaches. I think that's one of the biggest things you see with a guy like that. Like, he stuck around with three different head coaches. You know, I think in in Minnesota, which is which is pretty impressive. You, you know what I mean? He he's been around a bunch of different schemes, and he can pick and choose what he wants from those schemes. But um, he's good. He relates to the players, and I think he has an understanding of you know today's player. You know, I know it's changed over the years, but. Sure. Um, he does a real good job of that. And then the, the small conversations I've had with Callahan and with players, you know what I mean? That have worked with Callahan is, is he's uh he's one of the best in the, in the league, you know, a coach and alignment and, and we're going to work. And, and that's something I think alignment appreciate, you know, it's, it's something that, that you have to do to get better, but I think he's going to try and develop guys and, and work with guys and, and, you know, put the best five guys on the field each and every game. And it has an opportunity to be, honestly, a pretty impressive offensive line. And, and you know, with yourself, two-time pro bowler, J.C. Treader, who's obviously very well accomplished. Conklin's been a first-team all-pro. We'll figure out right guard. You know, we've got Teller, who played well, Forbes, and, and maybe some more competition brought in there. And then, you know, it seems likely that a left tackle will be drafted. I know if you look at any mock draft in the world right now, would have the Browns selecting their left tackle of the future uh, at pick number 10. So it's probably got to be a pretty exciting time for you and it kind of reminiscent of going back. To, to 14 when you had guys like you know Joe and Mitch and Alex Mack and yourself I mean you came into the league in a wide zone scheme with pretty much one of the best offensive lines possible and you guys have a chance to, to get back there would that be something you'd be pretty excited to be a part of again oh yeah I mean um, I mean even the guys we've brought in and, and guys we've seen like you said you know Wyatt and, and Forbes I think have a big chance to develop this offseason and, and with Callahan helping them out um, take that next step in their careers. And then you bring in a guy like Jack, who's been an all pro, he's had some injuries, but I think he's ascending in his career still. Um, and then myself and JC have played, you know, 48 straight games next to each other. And I awesome. think we have a, a good connection, you know, work, working together. And then you bring in a left tackle, whoever that might be. Um, you know, I think when you see three or four or five guys that have long careers in your room, it, it's something you want to prove. I think that was my, always my thing when I was a rookie is I want to prove to these guys that I belong with you and that I'm not going to, you know, be the anchor that, that holds this group down. And if we can bring in a, a young guy who has that mentality and who, who's ready to work and develop, you know, there's going to be some growing pains. You're a rookie in the NFL, but I think if you can take those steps and just show us that you're, you're there to work and there to get better, you know, I think it's, it, it can be huge for us. And, and hopefully we get some time to work together and, and, and really grow as a unit. Now you're talking about getting to work and working out and all of those things. How have you been able to kind of, what have you been doing from a football work standpoint in this period of social distancing and being at the house and, you know, probably getting some cardio chasing around the one-year-old, but other oh, yeah. than that, you know, how are you, uh, how are you kind of working out and, and, you know, what are you able to do to, to, help to try to prepare for the year? Right. It's tough because, you know, I was using the facility most of the time, you know, to get my workouts in. If we weren't traveling, I was, I was back training with, with the staff at the facility, but I mean, you do what you can, you know, you get some weights and, and you, you, you try and get your squats and your heavy lifts in. But like you said, I'm walking the dogs, you know, you got the baby, you're running around. You know, I don't think that's going to be an issue. You just want to keep your body in pristine, you know, as pristine shape as you can. If it's doing, you know, they have so many YouTube videos and stuff, you know, I've been doing yoga on uh, YouTube with my wife, you know, when the baby's napping, you know, you can, you can find different types of workouts that are actually very good. And at this point in my career, you know, you, you want to keep the muscle mass on, you want to keep those things, but you also want to, your body feeling good so yeah. you can go into the season and, and, and be ready to roll. But um, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how many guys can find different interesting tasks to, uh, to, you know, accomplish their goals, why, why they are social distancing. For you, are you watching, you know, a lot of Minnesota tape from last year to kind of get an idea of what this offense could look like, even going back maybe to some of your own rookie year tape with the Browns in terms of, a you know, not a physical study, but a film study, a mental study preparation standpoint? Is that kind of what you've been doing? Yeah, we, we've seen some of that stuff. Uh, it's kind of hard right now when you're in the true, true offseason. You know, you get as much film as you can, but it's hard to ask the questions, you know, with the coach, right. like you said, it's, right. it's, it's, it's tough to interact. And I'm not sure what we're going to do if, 
if April 6th, you know, we were supposed to start, if they're going to allow us to talk with the coaches then and get things going, um, I think that would be a good time to, to really dig in deep if we're not allowed, if we're allowed to have maybe meetings like this, you know, where we can talk online and, and they can do some whiteboard work and just really try and show us the nuances of the offense. But um, I, I, I've seen some stuff and I've talked to a lot of guys who've been in the system. And I think that's the main thing is that it's player friendly. They're working to, to find the best situations for the guys on your team. And, uh, and it's exciting time. You know, I, I know I, it's hard because I tell a lot of people, you know, I've been through a lot of different head coaches, a lot of different online coaches, um, going back to college, even, I mean, I switched like online coaches four times. So it's, it's, it's something I, I I've done a lot. And, and I think every year there's some sort of excitement, but it, you want to temper those expectations because we haven't performed up to our standard as a team yet, you know, but I, I do think we have the right guys in positions and now we really do have to go out there and, and do our best to, to prove that, Hey, like, you know, we got some good players on this team. Let's, let's win some football games now. Absolutely. Have you picked up any hobbies during this time? Cause as you mentioned, you know, when you're in the house for a long time and sometimes you got to figure out some new ways to occupy yourself. Right. I've, uh, I've read some, a little bit more than I usually do. You know, I try and read books, you know, I've been, uh, reading by David Goggins. You can't hurt me. He's a ex Navy seal guy. And that's the first book I've read, you know, this last kind of week, I'm almost done with that. And then I'm going to jump in. I have, uh, the tiger woods, like, uh -huh. more our biography thing that I uh -huh. might jump into, or I might go into the Harry Potter series, depending on how I, uh, how I finish, you know, get, get some more interesting things. Um, like I said, I've been cooking, you know, pretty much three meals a day here. So, you know, you get, you get that and then you're watching a baby. You don't have time to really pick up a huge hobby. We did get a couple puzzles that me and the wife are going to um, work on eventually. We'll, we'll see how that goes. You know, I'm not a huge puzzle guy. I like Legos a little bit more than puzzles, but, um, but we're going to do that. I'm trying to get my next Lego thing. I actually, uh, um, did a Empire State Building Lego oh, set. Wow. I actually have it right here. I might be able to show you guys. Yeah, bring that in. Yeah. This uh, this Jeez. guy. How many pieces yeah. is that? I don't even remember, but I did it right after the season was over, you know, when I was I was trying to relax and stuff. And so that was uh, that was pretty fun. I'm going to try and get another one. You know, one of the, it's like Lego architecture. So it's, it's, it's pretty fun. It brings you back to your kids. Uh, yeah. It's time and it gives you, it gives you kind of something to do, but, but with that, with the dogs, you know, I walk them every day. That's kind of my goal is like read a little bit, walk a little bit and hang out with the family and, and keep my body in shape is kind of the goal for the off season. Um, right now, you know, we'll see if something else jumps into my, uh, my thought process. I have been kicking myself. I was like, man, I should have put in like a, uh, like a golf simulator in the garage oh. or something like that. You know, I, I never pulled the trigger and now I'm like, I'm not going to play golf. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get, doesn't pet has one kind of in the area. You got to get him to ship it down to you. If he's not in the, uh, in the region at this time. I know, I know it. <laughs> Joel, it has been great talking to you. You look great. You look happy, which is wonderful. And obviously uh, sending our best to you and your family during this, you know, what is really probably the craziest time of, of all of our lives so far that we've ever uh, gone through. So thanks for taking the time. Last thing for you. I just wanted to see if there's anything you wanted to say to our fans, because I can tell you right now, our fans are as hungry for this season. They know the uniforms are coming. They're excited about that. They're excited for the draft. They love free agency, but they're so excited for this season. And you have been the one person on this team that's been able to uh, talk to the fans and play for these fans since 2014. You're the only one. So uh, is there yeah. anything that you would, you'd like to say to the fans at this time? Of course. Um, you know, the Cleveland fans are, are part of my life and, you know, I've been here going on my seventh year now and just know we truly appreciate what you guys do from, you know, you know cheering us on no matter what the circumstances are. I've been through obviously the worst years you could ever have in the NFL to uh, some of the best moments, you know, coming back and getting that win against the Jets, beating Pittsburgh my rookie year, things that, you know, you'll remember for the rest of your life. And and just know we truly appreciate all you, what you guys do. And uh, and we know this is a, a blue-collar working town, and we appreciate all those people that are still having to work right now and, you know, spend time away from their families. But hopefully the community raises up and uh, really continues to appreciate everybody and work together, you know, to, to calm this thing down. And that way we can have a – heck of a 2020 season and and we're looking forward to seeing you guys in the dog pound and really hearing that place get loud because i i have a feeling there's going to be some loud moments this year let's go and on that note joel we say thank you so much uh best to you and your family and uh can't wait to see you back at the facility and get back to football this year awesome thanks